Hi folks, my name is Ashley, I'm one of the founders of Skira and I'm here today to show you some of the new things in Construct 3 release 285. Let's dive in. Now the first thing you'll notice right away is the start page of Construct looks very different to how it used to. Uh, this is a uh, new design by uh, designer Paolo. Um, it's a lot simpler and neater and there's some key differences. I'll just quickly show you what the old start page looked like. Here's the old one from the previous release. And you can see uh, all the example projects listed here. Um, we've got absolutely loads of examples in Construct now, and you can see the list has become quite unwieldy. There's just an awful lot of content there. So what we've done is we've taken away uh, the example projects from the start page. You've got um, instant access to your recent projects here and some useful links around. Uh, and so there are just three random examples shown at the bottom. Now, the examples themselves have moved to the brand new example browser. So this is, uh, if you click here on the start page to browse examples, um, this is the new example browser, which is uh, dedicated to just listing all the now hundreds of examples that come with Construct. So you can see there's lots of sorting options on the left here, and there's a nice sort of uh, compact card layout on the right with all the thumbnails and example projects. Um, and if you click on one, it expands the card with just some more information and there's lots of tags now. And you can, of course, uh, preview the project and open it as before. Now, the tagging system is much more comprehensive way of organizing the examples than we had before. Um, so uh, as you can see, we uh, still got the beginner, intermediate and advanced levels um, similar to before. But there's now also new types of categories, including uh, new projects since the last release. So these are all new since the previous stable release, so uh, check them out. And um, lots of uh, genres and uh, tags for other miscellaneous things. And you can now also filter by the plugins and behaviors and effects that projects use. For example, if you want to find all the projects using arrays, um, there's a list of them. You can also combine filters such as looking for all projects of beginner level and of a platformer genre. So these are all beginner level platformers. And you can, of course, type in a search query in the search box. So that's all new. Have a look at that. And we uh, think you'll uh, enjoy that and uh, have a explore of all the many example projects and construct. Um, moving on. There's a, some uh, more improvements for the 3D features in Construct, and there's now a new option to change the scale of the z-axis. So I've just got a, a little project to demonstrate the difference here. And previously, the camera would have been 100 units above the layout, and this is what we now call a normalized z-axis. It's always the same regardless of the viewport or any the size of anything else in the project. Uh, this works well for some 2D content, uh, but when you're making a fully 3D game with 3D camera, this is not always what you want. Um, one issue which comes up is trying to make uh, trying to make 3D shapes the right size. So if you want something which is perfectly cube, um, you can see this size is 120 by 120, but the Z height is just 20, and this is with a normalized uh, axis, and you can see it looks roughly like a cube. And if you look at the properties of the 3D camera, you can see why this is. Uh, it's because in normalized mode, the camera is 100 units above the layout. And that means for every unit on the uh, z-axis is equivalent to 5.8 units on the other axes. So it's not the same. And that's why you have to choose a different uh, z-height to make it look like a cube. The new uh, z-axis scale uh, now allows you to change this to regular, which means all three axes have the same units. And now if you look at the properties of 3D camera, you can see the Z scale is now one, which means it matches the X and Y axes. And the default camera Z position has now raised higher up to compensate for that. Now, uh, when you preview the project, the, you can see the Z height of the 3D shape is now very short. Um, but now it makes it easier to size because we can make it 120 by 120 by 120. And now you can see that it's a cube because uh, the scale on every axis is the same. There's some other reasons why I might want to use this mode. It's generally just a more helpful way to handle 3D coordinates when you move the 3D camera around in a fully 3D game. Now, one extra thing that this uh, new mode 
uh, makes possible is if I open the um, 3D first person shooter example, which is this one with the pigs, which you shoot with tomatoes. This has now been updated to use the regular Z axis scale. So all three axes use the same units. And when you use regular mode, it now makes possible to change the field of view, um, which is the kind of the, the width of how much you can see uh, with a 3D camera. So if I just preview the project, this is the default with a 45 degree field of view. And now just to demonstrate the difference, I'll make the field of view much larger. Uh, I'll double it to 90 degrees. And now when you preview the project, you have a much wider field of view. You can see there's uh, more, more of the layout content in the view there. And it creates quite a um, interesting kind of distorting effect as you rotate the camera but you might want to use uh, slightly lower fields of views, um, but it's now fully customizable, so you can choose it to suit the style of your game, um, which is an important customization for 3D content once more. The last thing I'm going to cover in this video is the, um, by popular demand, there's a new setting for layers, um, which I'll just demonstrate quickly here. Uh, when you click on the layer, layer properties now have a interactive setting. If you turn off layer interactive, uh, it will no longer respond to mouse or touch input. This is uh, useful for menus or um, dialogues or other user interface em elements that might be on the layer that's hidden, uh, and you don't want those layers to be interactive with any input. When you turn off this setting, those layers will not be uh, not respond to touch or mouse input, which stops them uh, being stops input events interfering with them when they're not supposed to be visible. Uh, you can, of course, change this at runtime with a system action. Um, that's all I'm going to cover in this video. Uh, as ever, check the release notes for the full details. And we hope you enjoy this release.